Hello, 3D printer peeps. Hello, Bamboo Lab users. Did you know Bamboo Lab's Maker World has component kits that allow you to build functional 3D printed items on the Bamboo Maker Lab site? There are several projects you can choose from. Then you are able to download the STL files and order a complete component kit, enabling you to build that entire functional project without needing any additional parts. Everything from LED lamps and clocks to marble runs and boats. You will notice I have two boat project component kits here in front of me. That is because there are two awesome STL files available for them through Bamboo Lab. And today we are going to make both. Let's head over to Bamboo Lab's Maker World to download the STL files for the boat models and get your Boat Model Components Kit. Here we are on BambooLab.com. Go ahead and click into Maker World. On here, click on Maker's Supply. In Maker's Supply, you will be greeted with a whole series of functional projects you can make through Bamboo Lab and their Maker Supply kits. Today, we are going to make the boat. Go ahead and click on the boat. In order to make this boat, or this boat, you will need one of their boat model component kits. Either kit comes with the same wind-up motor. To order this motor, you may choose either one. Let's go ahead and make this boat right here. Order this motor kit and scroll down. Here you will see the two compatible models with this motor. Wind-up motorboat is the one we are looking at now, and the other option is Thunderboat, based on the old TV show Thunder in Paradise. Go ahead and click on Wind-up motorboat. On this screen, simply highlight all, and then look for the profile that best matches your setup. Highlight the profile, press Download 3MF. Open up Bamboo Studio, and drag that 3MF file onto your plate. The project will automatically populate to create this print. You will want to avoid resizing this project to ensure that the motor kit fits this boat properly. Load up your AMS with the colors required, keeping in mind the maker of this model has already assigned colors. You may change these colors to whatever you'd like. Load up your AMS with those colors and print all four of these plates. Be sure to check to make sure you have the correct printer loaded. If not, go ahead and change it. I will choose P1P with an 04 nozzle and you will want to click Use Modified Value. That will move any changes this project made over to your new printer profile. While on this screen, you can make any changes you'd like to the colors that are selected. I'm going to change this ugly green back to black. We'll now have a red and black boat with a white and black cabin. I will be printing on a smooth PEI bed. These beds have phenomenal bed adhesion. I use them on all my bamboo printers. Before sending this print, let's have a look at strength. I'm going to go ahead and add one wall and click Detect Thin Walls. In case there are any areas that are too thin for three walls, it will reduce the number of walls to accommodate those sections. Let's click over to Speed. I do not like printing this fast. I'm going to go ahead and slow things down a bit. We'll go 225. We'll go 250. We'll go 220. And we'll go down here to 220. These are small changes, but I just like to take it a little easier on the machine. This will help my machine last a long time, help prevent clogs, extruder problems, and all sorts of other print issues. Go ahead and select the filaments you are using. I will switch these to match filaments I work with, such as Creality Black, Creality Red, Esun Brown, and Creality White. Keep in mind, you can set all of these to generic PLA and simply set the color right here in this menu. 
Once this is all done, go ahead and choose flushing volumes, press recalculate and press OK. I'm going to save this project. I'm going to hit slice plate and I'm going to start sending each of these beds to my printer. I will start with the main hull by pressing slice plate and sending it off to my P1S or my P1P. I'll send it off to my P1S. Don't forget to check time lapse so you can get a cool video of your project when you're done. Next up is to print your cabin. Do not add supports to this model. Supports have been manually configured. Again, that is because this is a pre-prepared 3MF file. If this was a typical STL file, you would need to add supports. Go ahead and slice this plate and send it to your printer. You may have some concerns over the successful printing of these thin supports. However, I did test it out and they worked fine. Finally, print your steering wheel in whatever filament you'd like. Choose something strong so it can snap into place and print your life ring. I split my printing between a P1P, P1S, and A1 printer. Next up, boat option number two. I will create a new project. Return to Bamboo Lab and choose the Thunderboat. Scroll down. In the same spot you downloaded the original boat, go ahead and download the Thunderboat. Click on Thunderboat and it will bring you to Maker World. You'll have three options, mini, medium, and big. Let's go with medium. Go ahead and download your 3MF. Import it into Bamboo Studio and it is also a 3MF project file. However, it did switch my printer to an A1 Mini. I will switch it back to a P1S. When you switch to your printer, be sure to choose Use Modified Values so that the values from this project file will carry over to your printer. Here we have the boat, the thunder labeling, the stand, and the rudder. You don't have to print the stand, you don't have to print the thunder, but you do have to print the rudder and the boat. The boat, amazingly, prints straight up and down. Again, because this is a 3MF file that is pre-prepared, avoid changing too many options. You may not need to make changes at all. I'm going to print it exactly as it is. I will send my boat off to my P1S with Elegoo Black. I will send my stand off to my P1P and I will print the stand in white. I am going to slow it down just to be sure. Because it looks like it's kind of thin. Slice and dice. Off we go. Next up, I will send this to my X1C. I'm going to slow this down a lot. I'm going to bring down those first layers a bunch too. I am using smooth PEI beds on all these machines to be sure I get good bed adhesion. Slice and dice. I will do this in silk gold. And finally, I'm going to do my rudder on a Bamboo Lab A1. I'm going to go ahead and add three walls. I'm going to check detect thin walls. This will just help make this thing be a little stronger. If it's too thin for three walls, detect thin walls. We'll make sure that it reduces those walls. Slice and dice. I will send it to my A1 and we will use blue just to help us see it.
Here we are with all of our printed parts. Those of you attempting to print this Thunder labeling for the Thunder boat, if you are using a machine such as an X1C with first layer inspection, I recommend turning it off, stopping the print after the first layer to inspect it and then resume the print can cause these tiny little lines to come off the bed. I did mine on a smooth PEI bed using the Bamboo Green liquid adhesive. I'm going to use a razor to get it off the bed. Let's assemble the Thunderbolt first. Go ahead and test your stand. Perhaps doing the stand in white wasn't the best decision, but you can see the stand works really well. Next up is to glue on the trim. My glue of choice for 3D printing is E6000. However, today I need things to be done quickly, so I will use the gold standard 3D glue. I'm going to use a dropper and dab just a tiny bit into the channel and place the word thunder into the groove. The 3D Gloop is super aggressive and will discolor or damage the surface of your model, so please be very careful if working with it. It also will not allow for repositioning. To do the long trim, I'm putting a dab of 3D Gloop on my surface here, and I'm just gonna run this over it. And press it into place. 3D Gloop holds almost immediately after a few seconds Good luck ever getting it off. Super perfect when having to go around a bend like this. Our last step is the rudder. We do not glue the rudder because the rudder needs to be able to move. I was starting to believe the rudder didn't fit, but if you support it really close to the base and just give it a firm push, it does in fact go in. There you have it. The Thunderboat is ready for its motor, but first let's build this guy. Here is the cabin. It has some supports. I use a state-of-the-art Dollar Tree plier. There we go. With the supports off, snap your steering wheel into the console. Just line up the hole, put your finger over the thickest portion and clip it in. You will see it's even workable. Next up, we will attach the console to the hull. This works via hole and peg. You don't need to glue it in. Just grab the hull with the peg, the console with the slot, line it up. and push it firmly, and I do mean firmly, into place. Now for the final part, our throw ring. Here we are with our two boats and our two motor kits. Let's open them up and pop them on our boats. Motor number one, take your motor and gently place it into the boat. Motor number two, this motor mounts a little bit differently. It clips on to the transom. Line up the clip with the transom and slide it down. 
Here are our two boats with our two motors. The only thing left to do is wind them up and put them in the water. Here I am at a green, mostly frozen swimming pool. I'm gonna wind up our little boat. <laughs> now the real tough one, the big boy, let me wind her up. Well, they work and they float and balance a lot better than I expected. Here are both fully functional models using the Bamboo Lab Boat Model Components Kit. When you wind them up, be sure not to let go until the propeller is in the water. The friction allows them to spin slower and unwind properly. I'm Greg Adventure and you're watching 3D Rundown.